Hey, what is up YouTube fam? It's Ben here back with another video. Today we're kicking off something new and fresh and exciting. So this is the first video of our beginners series, which is simply going to be a series of videos, each of which will break down an individual yoga pose. Um, we're gonna start with the most common and foundational yoga poses and we'll slowly work our way up from there. But I wanted to do this because um, I shout out a lot of different poses and cues and um, kind of muscle engagements when I'm teaching these classes. And oftentimes within a flow, there's not enough time to really break it down and explain every part of um, the common poses. So I want to create separate videos, especially for any of you beginners out there. This is geared at you. Uh, but also if you're an intermediate or experienced yoga practitioner, these videos will also be a great refresher for you to uh, tune back in and just get an even better understanding of uh, the anatomy and the purpose and the strengthening and lengthening and stretches of each one of these shapes. So with that being said, today we're going to dive into downward facing dog. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get right in my downward facing dog as I talk and as I explain things. You can hold your downward facing dog with me for a portion or you could just watch the screen. It doesn't matter, whatever you feel comfortable with. So I'm getting into my downward facing dog and this shape is probably in a yoga class if you've taken a yoga class unless it was a yin or deep stretch or restorative type of class, it maybe wouldn't be. but. Um, Downward facing dog, it's, it's often thought of as a home base in a yoga flow, but it's usually understood how difficult and energetic this shape is. There's a lot happening. It's an inverted posture. It's a partial forward fold. And we're using essentially the whole body to create a strengthening and lengthening position. So let's start from the foundation on our legs side. So our feet are pressing down into the mat. The toes are obviously ground and we're pressing our heels down toward the mat. Now, whether your heels actually touch the mat or if they're just floating and pressing down depends on your specific body. It has to do with your hamstring and calf flexibility, but also the Achilles tendons. This shape is very strengthening for the Achilles tendon. If you have a lot of tightness or strain on your Achilles tendons, it might feel harder to root the heels all the way down. So. Regardless of where your heels land in this shape, we're pressing downward and using that to create space in the backs of the calves and backs of the legs. So moving up to the rest of the legs, while the backs of the legs lengthen, as I've mentioned, the front of the legs are strengthening. So we can feel the shins keeping us stable and we can feel the quads activating and start to flex. And we can notice the quads activating and flexing because the kneecaps will lift up a little bit, right? The knees will lift. And uh, we'll be able to straighten our legs a little bit more when our quads engage. And that creates even more length in the back side of the legs. Um, and again, your legs may not be totally straight. It's more important in this pose, in my opinion, to have a long and healthy spine than to have perfectly straight legs. So if you feel like it's really hard for you to straighten your legs and you find that if you try to straighten your legs, your spine is rounding, go ahead and just bring a slight bend into your knees. Allow that to create more space to fully extend the spine and find a, uh, or not really extend the spine, but just your, find your ability to find a neutral and straight spine. So with that being said, that's a good breakdown of the legs, and let's take it up to the hip joints. So at the pelvis, we want essentially a 90 degree angle. That's a good baseline, and for some people it might be a tiny bit more, for some a tiny bit less. But the goal there, kind of the standard flexation is the 90 degree angle at the pelvis. From there, we want the spine to be relatively neutral. Again, there may be a little bit of extension in the spine, but overall, we want it pretty straight, pretty neutral, all the way up into the neck and the head. We want as much relaxation in the neck and the head as possible. Again, there might be slight extension in the neck to create a little more space in the upper spine, but overall, we want that area to soften and not really put too much effort and strain into. Um, moving into the shoulder blades. so. We're creating a little bit of space between the shoulder blades, finding some slight protraction. And that, pro, that word protraction just means that the shoulder blades are getting a little bit further away from each other, um, just to create more extension on the whole back body there. From the shoulder socket, we want to externally rotate the arms. And external rotation just relates to 
uh, kind of how we're rotating within the shoulder socket. So when I say external rotation, I mean wrapping the triceps back, thinking about the eyes of the elbows, soft parts of the elbows pointing forward, and the pointy parts of the elbows pointing more back. And again, it might not be too much of an actual physical change for you when you kind of ignite that cue of external rotation. Even if it's just mental, it can make a big difference. Um, wrapping the triceps back, creating a little more strength, a little more buoyancy and mobility in the arms. From there, we wanna lay our hands and our fingertips flat down on the mat. I like to have my pointer finger facing uh, directly forward, and then the rest of the three fingers outside of the pointer finger will face a little bit toward the sides of my mat, and again, that's mostly due to the external rotation of the arms as the thumbs face in toward each other. Um, I like to bring some space between my fingertips, so around one inch between each of my fingertips is ideal for me, and that just allows me to create that grippy feeling. You know, you really wanna be able to grip the mat and use the fingertips. The more you can use the fingertips, the less dumping that occurs down into the wrists. I always say that using the hands without the fingertips is like walking without your toes, right? It's like walking just on your heels. So we wanna make sure we're using all of the hands there. And that kind of essentially takes us through most of the cues in downward facing dog. Um, you know, there's, <laughs> as I kind of went through that shape, the whole body is activating in some way or, or another. We just have to figure out how to adjust to make this shape uh, fit our bodies. I'll bring in one more variation. Um, if downward facing dog feels too challenging on your body, whether it's the hamstrings, whether it's the shoulders, a good variation, and I don't have a chair in front of me right now, but a good variation is to grab a chair. Like let's say the chair was facing that way. I would grab onto the top uh, back of the chair. I would send my hips back and I would rest my hands down on the chair and use that to lengthen my spine and grow my shoulders while sending my hips back in space and pressing through my feet. So that's just a good kind of chair yoga variation if you can imagine my hands on the back of a chair right now. Just using that to create a little bit of a safer, more accessible shape if down dog feels um, like too much or if you're going through an injury. Um, so that's down dog again. This is the first video of the beginner series. We're gonna continue adding to this uh, playlist, to this initiative so that for any of you beginners, you can keep taking my classes and maybe some of the shapes or cues that I throw out will make a little bit more sense and we could just keep growing our practice from there along the way. So uh, with that being said, thank you all so much for watching. It's always such a blessing to share this space um, and to grow together. So please feel free to subscribe, F feel free to like the video, comment to tell me what poses you want me to break down or what uh, you're curious about learning and um, then let's keep going on the journey, okay? But until we meet again, peace and love. Have a great rest of your day.